You want to work in AI or machine learning, but the math feels overwhelming. The good news is that it's not as bad as you think. In this video, I'll break down which math actually matters, what you can skip, and the best free resources and study strategies to learn it all. Because depending on your path, you might not need that much math at all. So let's break it down. If you're new here, I'm Jean. I've been in tech for 20 years, and most recently I was an engineering manager at Meta where I led AI projects. One question that I get all the time is, do you really need math? to work in AI? And the answer is that it depends on your goals. I think of it kind of like driving a car. You don't really need to know how the engine works to get from point A to B. But if the car breaks down or if you're having any issues, knowing a little bit about the mechanics of a car can help you troubleshoot. So my recommendation is to start with your end goal. If you want to design new cutting edge machine learning algorithms as a researcher or a scientist at a lab, then yes, math is non-negotiable. But if your goal is more big tech or startups, you only need the math out of more high level, you don't have to be a math genius. Libraries like TensorFlow and Scikit-Learn handle the complex stuff behind the scene for you. Now, when it comes to learning the math, here are some study tips I found helpful. First, use multiple sources. Don't rely on just one course or one book. I might watch a Khan Academy video to get the big picture and then read a textbook for the details and maybe work on some coding examples to make it more concrete. Which leads to my second point, you want to connect the math to real problems. And for me, it's hard to engage with something that I don't really understand what is the use for. Third tip is to take notes in your words. One of the best ways to learn new skills is to try to explain it. So I write a summary as if I'm explaining it to my past self. It will make everything stick better. And here's the part that makes all of this easier. If you're taking notes and organizing your learning, I recommend using Notion. What's cool about Notion's new AI update it doesn't just suggest things, it actually does the work for you. With Notion Agent, I can say create a study guide from my notes on derivatives and the chain rule. And it doesn't just outline it, it builds the full guide with typical mistakes and fixes for them and even adds practical problems. The best part is that it learns my style. I can set it to always include visual examples and code snippets so when I ask explain gradient descent with coding examples. It pulls from my workspace and builds exactly what I need in the right format. And here's a hack that I love. I'll grab a transcript from any lecture, let's say Khan Academy. You drop them into Notion and let the agent turn them into structured note that I can reference anytime later. It's like having a study buddy who never forgets anything. I wish I had something like this when I was studying for math. This is such a game changer. You can also track your progress while you're learning, organize reading research papers, or building an AI project portfolio. Notion Asian can do so much for you. And this video is sponsored by Notion, but honestly, I was really excited when they reached out to me because I already use it all the time. So if you want to try Notion Agent for yourself, check out the link in the description. Now let's get back to the video. So how should you actually tackle the math for AI? There are three core subjects, calculus, linear algebra, and statistics. That's the order I studied them in college, and it's the sequence that most people recommend. But how you choose to study will be different based on where you are. If you want to eventually do research or build new algorithms, you'll probably learn all three in school, subject by subject. And sometimes people ask me how they can prepare before going to college, and my answer is don't prepare. When you get to school, they'll teach you everything, so don't worry about it. Now, if you're self-studying and have done math before, then you want to just brush up on the concepts and start building. Use your problems to guide your learning by looking up concepts only when you get stuck. But if you're brand new to math, you can take either approach depending on how much time you have and how much math you like. So you can either go through the courses one by one or start building. Chances are that when you are actually going through the subjects one by one, you might not understand everything, but that's okay. You can always come back to them later. But in order to look up the topics later, you do need to know which math is which so you know which book to look up or which course to look it up. So let me break down what each type of math actually does and when you would need it. Starting with calculus. By the way, the whole curriculum and the links and the resources are all in the full AI roadmap PDF you can find on my website. Okay, calculus is about understanding how things change. In AI, we use the same idea to help models get better. The chain rule is literally how backpropagation works, which is the algorithm that trains the neural networks. 
It's about understanding how changes ripple through connected systems. If you are just one thing, how does that affect everything else down the stream? Derivatives show how something changes and gradients are like derivatives for a lot of variables at once. They help AI models tweak themselves to make better predictions and reduce mistakes. You'll also want to understand basic integration techniques while derivatives tell you the rate of change, integrals add up all those changes over time. These can help you when you're debugging why your models aren't learning or if you need to understand what's happening under the hood of frameworks like TensorFlow. Also learn about local versus global minima, saddle points, and convexity. These ideas explain why some models get stuck in suboptimal solutions while others find the best answers. A good free resource to learn calculus is with Khan Academy, which gives you plenty of practice problems to cement your understanding. If you prefer books, check out Calculus, A New Horizons 6th edition or later. That's what Stanford uses for their calculus classes. Next is linear algebra. This is basically the math of organizing information. All data in AI gets turned into these grids of numbers. A photo is a grid where each cell contains brightness of a pixel. A sentence becomes a grid with words. If you're working with data, you're working with linear algebra. This was my favorite type of math personally, because once you get into it, it's very intuitive and logical. Here's what you need to know. Start with vectors. A vector is basically a list of numbers, but it also has direction and magnitude. Matrices are essentially multi-dimensional vectors. Instead of just a list, you have rows and columns of numbers. In neural networks, the weights are stored as matrices, while biases are typically vectors, which is just one column. Then you'll need to understand basic matrix operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and transpose. These help AI systems process and transform data efficiently. Systems of linear equations will come up a lot in optimization problems. Khan Academy also has a great linear algebra course, all for free. And the Linear Algebra by Bronson is a Stanford recommended textbook. Next is statistics. Most of machine learning actually comes from statistical learning theory. So there is a huge overlap between statistics and AI. When your weather app says there's a 70% chance of rain, that's statistics. So let's break down what you need to actually know. Descriptive statistics is about understanding your data before you do anything fancy with it. Things like mean, median, standard deviation, and distribution. Probability distributions are patterns that show up in data all the time. Normal distribution is the classic bell curve you've probably seen before. The binomial distribution shows up when you're dealing with yes or no outcomes. Like, is this email spam or not? Understanding these patterns can help you choose the right approach for your problem. Sometimes you need a simple linear model, sometimes something more complex. Finally, learn probability theory, which is the math of figuring out how likely something is to happen. Take statistics and probability on Khan Academy, or the recommended reading is A First Course in Probability by Sheldon Ross Pearson. If you want to learn all three in one, take Mathematics for Machine Learning Specialization on Coursera. So what happens after you master all of the math? Well, if you want tips on how to prepare for the rest of your AI and machine learning career, watch this video and I'll see you there.